Part of the issue with regard to the tensions and coercion in the South China Sea uh, has to do with um, the lack, previous lack of empirical data um, on exactly what has happened. And so National Defense University took the effort to collect all the actions and tactics employed by all the claimants in the South China Sea and collected uh, data on that, on those actions going all the way back to 1995. So between 1995 and 2012, what actions have all the claimants, and those claimants are China, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan, and then put them in a database and then analyze uh, what actions and what patterns we see uh, occurring between uh, all the countries. Um, what the empirical data seems to um, suggest is that uh, China has been the, 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 the greatest uh, user of all of these different tactics, and those tactics are uh, military, paramilitary, economic, uh, uh, legal, administrative, uh, and strategic communications, and then diplomacy we, we break down into three different categories, um, which I won't go into here. But once we have those categories, we're able to collect data on, on the specific actions that these countries undertook uh, within, that, uh, within the time frame 95 to 2012. And so one of the patterns we observed, China has overwhelmed the other countries with the number of actions that it performs. Uh, secondly, in terms of just military and paramilitary actions, China, again, has a lion's share of those. In, in the period between 95 and 2012, uh, China uh, undertook 55% of all the military and paramilitary actions. That means that all of the other countries combined uh, were, roughly, uh, ha le were roughly less than half of all the military actions. China took up 55% of those. In the economic sphere, again, China also uh, outnumber the others uh, by quite a margin. So what you see is, um, at least what the empirical data seems to show, is that China is using a wide range of instruments of influence to uh, advance its claims, to protect its claims. And the other countries have essentially uh, uh, have, have been active, um, but not quite, uh, do not quite number as much as China. Now, some interesting findings. Um, Taiwan was, was certainly an, an active uh, claimant as well, despite its uh, ambiguous international status. Um, but the other surprise is that, at least in, as far as the numbers were concerned, Vietnam seemed to have a relatively low number. Um, so those, those are some of the, the, um, some of the findings that we, uh, that we, we discovered. Uh, we think it's important to collect this kind of data to, to have a common uh, page for everyone to, to read off of so that we know uh, we can all uh, have a discussion on this. Um, and I guess finally the last point I would make is there's, there's always been a disagreement over uh, who caused the initial tension in the South China Sea. The Chinese claim that the U.S. rebalance caused the tension. The, the U.S. Uh, indicates that China had been the first to, to initiate tensions and aggressive behavior in 2009. Well, we collected data on that as well, and there was a spike of Chinese activities and actions in 2009, which predates uh, the U.S. rebalance to Asia policy. So I think it, it's pretty clear that 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 argument has been won, at least in terms of the empirical data that we, we have collected. Now, what's not so clear is the Chinese claim that they are also responding to the actions of, of their rivals in Southeast, in Southeast Asia. Our data does show that there was a spike of Vietnam and Philippines actions also in that 2008-2009 time frame. Vietnamese have subsequently said to me uh, that that doesn't prove that Vietnam or the Philippines started any of those actions. That, that could have been them responding to to China's aggressive behavior. So I think um, the bottom line from this type of uh, effort is that uh, it's very important to collect this kind of data so that our diplomats, our policymakers can, uh, can have discussions over, over the exact uh, behavior of the countries and so that we can get to, um, to coming up with appropriate policies to resolve them.